Good morning and welcome to the benefits of Canterbury, St Dunstan, St Mildred and St Peter where you join us for our service of morning prayer on Wednesday the 20th of July. My name is John Morrison and I'm standing in for our rector, the Reverend Joe Richards and our curate, the Reverend Jenny Walpole. In the calendar of the Church of England, we are asked to remember Margaret of Antioch, martyr, 4th century, and Bartolome de las Casas, apostle to the Indies, 1566. A few words about both. Margaret, also called Marina, gave her life during the Diocletian persecution at the beginning of the 4th century. Her preaching before her death is said to have converted many to the Christian faith. Bartolome de, la Casas, de las Casas was a 16th century Dominican priest who became known as the defender of the Indians in the New World of America. Born in 1484 at Casas in Seville, Bartolome arrived in Haiti in 1502 and underwent a conversion after witnessing the injustice inflicted on the Indians. Proclaiming that Jesus Christ was being crucified in the poor, he went on to spend a lifetime challenging the church and the empire of his day. He was consecrated Bishop of Chiapa in Mexico in 1543, where he continued his prophetic role and emerges as a man of unquestioned courage and a theologian of remarkable depth, whose vision continues to set in relief the challenge of the gospel in a world of injustice. He died on the 18th of July, 1566. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all, to you be glory and praise for ever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, and in these last days you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your spirit ever renew our lives and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The refrain for Psalm 110, starting at the first verse, is, The Lord is King and has put on glorious apparel. The Lord is King and has put on glorious apparel. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. May the Lord stretch forth the scepter of your power, rule from Zion in the midst of your enemies. Noble are you on this day of your birth, on the holy mountain from the womb of the dawn, the dew of your new birth is upon you. The Lord is King and has put on glorious apparel. The Lord has sworn he will not and will not retract. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The King is at your right hand, O Lord, shall smite the kings in the day of his wrath. The Lord is King and has put on glorious apparel. In all his majesty, he shall judge among the nations. Smiting heads over all the wide earth, 
He shall drink from the brook beside the way. Therefore shall he lift high his head. The Lord is king and has put on glorious apparel. Lord Jesus, divine son and eternal priest, inspire us with the confidence of your final conquest of evil and grant that daily on our way we may drink of the brook of your eternal life and so find courage against all adversities for your mercy's sake. Amen. The refrain for Psalm 111 is the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Alleluia. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the faithful and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and honour and his righteousness endures forever. He appointed a memorial for his marvellous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gave food to those who feared him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He showed his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hand are truth and justice. All his commandments are sure. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. They stand fast forever and ever. They are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have those who live by it. His praise endures forever. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Gracious God, you are full of compassion. May we who long for your kingdom to come rejoice to do your will and acknowledge your power alone to save. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. The refrain for Psalm 112 is the righteous will be held in everlasting remembrance. The righteous will be held in everlasting remembrance. Alleluia. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land, a generation of the faithful that will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness endures forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. Gracious and full of compassion are the righteous. The righteous will be held in everlasting remembrance. It goes well with those who are generous in lending and order their affairs with justice, for they will never be shaken. The righteous will be held in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil tidings. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the law. The righteous will be held in everlasting remembrance. Their heart is sustained and will not fear until they see the downfall of their foes. They have given freely to the poor. Their righteousness stands fast forever. Their head will be exalted with honour. The wicked shall see it and be angry. They shall gnash their teeth in despair. The desire of the wicked shall perish. The righteous will be held in everlasting remembrance. Generous God, save us from the meanness that calculates its interest and hoards its earthly gain. As we have freely given, so may we freely give. In the grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from the first book of Samuel, chapter 2, starting at the 12th verse. Now the sons of Eli were scoundrels. They had no regard for the Lord or for the duties of the priests to the people. When anyone offered sacrifice, the priest's servants would come while the meat was boiling with a three-pronged fork in his hand, and he would thrust it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the fork brought up, the priest would take for himself. This is what they did at Shiloh to all the Israelites who came there. Moreover, before the fat was burned, the priest's servants would come and say to the one who was sacrificing, Give meat for the priest to roast, for he will not accept boiled meat from you, but only raw. If the man said to him, Let them burn the fat first, and then take whatever you wish, he would say, No, you must give it now. If not, I will take it by force. Thus the sin of the young men was very great in the sight of the Lord for they treated the offerings to the Lord with contempt. Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. His mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, May the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift she has made in the, uh, to the Lord. And then they would return to their home. And the Lord took note of Hannah, and she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. And the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. Now, Eli was very old. He heard all that his sons were doing to all Israel and how they lay with the women who served at the entrance to the tent of meeting. And he said to them, Why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all these people. No, my sons, it is not a good report that I hear the people of the Lord spreading abroad. If one person sins against another, someone can intercede for the sinner with the Lord. But if someone sins against the Lord, who can make the intercession? But they would not listen to the voice of their father, for it, is, it was the will of the Lord to kill them. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow both in stature and in favour with the Lord and with the people. Our Canticle Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts and your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for snowing and bread to eat, so is my word my, that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless, but it will accomplish that which I purpose and seek, succeed in the task that I gave it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Our second reading today comes from Luke chapter 20, verses 1 to 8. One day, 
As Jesus was teaching the people in the temple and telling the good news, the chief priests and the scribes came with the elders and said to him, Tell us by what authority you are doing these things. Who is it who gave you this authority? And he answered them, I will also ask you a question, and you tell me, did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? They discussed it with one another, saying, if we see from heaven, he will say, well, why did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, all the people will stone us, for they are convinced that John was a prophet. So they answered that they did not know where it came from. And then Jesus said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Our responsory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Our Gospel Canticle this morning is the Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the, uh, uh, the hands of all the haters, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. Gracious God, we thank you for bringing us through exceptional weather for the United Kingdom and for the gentle Atlantic breezes cooling and raining on parched lands and people. We pray for the day and its tasks, for the world and its needs, and for the church and her life. We are asked today to pray for the social services, for the considerable difficulties that they have, and the resourced as they are. We also Pray for those who work in the criminal justice system and alongside the victims we pray also for the perpetrators of crime that they may see the errors of their ways and the damage that they do. We are grateful, gracious Lord, for those who are part of the aid agencies risking their life and their being with working in confrontational frontline areas throughout the world. And we're especially asked to remember those who are living in poverty, 
or under oppression, or in the ebb and flow of violence or war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go safely today in the relief of this cooling weather. And we look forward to seeing you if you are available this evening at six o'clock for night prayer at Conklin. And we'll be back tomorrow morning at nine o'clock for a service of benefits morning prayer. Goodbye.